the resurrection. My goodness. There's so much I could say about this, this mystery. This is the foundation of our faith, by the way. This is what distinguishes Christianity from other world religions. If you want to break free of the relativism of our time, Oh, what's the difference? Who cares if you're a Buddhist or a Muslim or a Hindu? It's all, we're all going to heaven anyway. Kind of thinking. Then just ask, who is Jesus Christ? Just ask that person, who is Jesus? Oh, he was a nice teacher. Oh, he was a prophet. The Muslims believe he's a prophet. Um, he's a nice guy, a wise man, an avatar maybe, you know, that's about it. But is he God in human form? Oh, that's taking it a little too far. I don't think so. Well, what happened after, what, why do we celebrate Easter? His resurrection. Because Jesus rose from the dead. How many of those other world religious leaders rose from the dead? No. None. None. Answer, none. Mohammed still in the grave. Buddha is still in the grave. And by the way, just for the record, none of them claim to be God. None of them. None of them claimed to be God. Certainly none of the Jewish prophets, Moses, Abraham, Elijah, none of them claim to be God. Are you kidding? It's against Jewish law to say such things. That's why the Jewish leaders nailed Jesus. is because he was a mere man, what? Claiming to, Claiming to be God, very good. Not just once, twice they tried to stone him in the Gospels for that reason alone. That's why they hated him. He was, very, he was that clear that I am God. And then, oh, blasphemy. At his trial, what did the Jewish leaders say? Blasphemy. What need we of witnesses? You've heard the charge. No one has claimed to be God. And if people do, they put them away with rooms with mattress wallpaper. Right? But Jesus not only claimed to be God, but he said, I'll prove it. Kill me, and three days later, you're going to see me again. Mm -hmm. Yeah, I know. No, you think so. Do you think anybody believed him? No. Ironically, the only ones that were worried were the Pharisees. His very enemies. Why? That's why they put guards around the tomb. They were afraid someone was going to steal the body and then say, well, he rose from the dead. So you better put guards around that. They're the only ones that were believing in him. That were worried. Maybe they didn't believe it, but they were worried. Why would they go through all that trouble? Hmm? You see that? And in the past, I've gone over some of the crazy theories as to why did Jesus didn't rise in a you know, wrong tomb. Everyone's just hysterical, hallucinations. He was a phantom. He was an illusion, a delusion of their imagination. Listen, people don't die a martyr's death of torture because they had a delusion or a dream or they were at the wrong tomb or they cooked up some plot to create a new church. That was the, that was the real dilly. Mm. <clears throat> Every single one of the disciples and the people around them died horrible deaths believing they walked with this man, talked with this man, saw him die, 
and then saw him again alive. Not a ghost. What? Flesh. Touch me. A ghost does not have flesh and bones as you see I have. Well, that only happened for once or twice. Right? 40 days. For how many days? 40 days. 40 days he stayed on earth. Over a month. These were not hysterical people. They were not delusional. 500 people saw him at one time, it says. This is why the church spread so quickly. Because these men and women who saw and touched him died believing that he was exactly who he said he was. And who did he say he was? God Almighty in human flesh. Mm. Amen is right. So when the Testigos and the Mormons and anyone else comes up, you let them know that Jesus is God and you will send them all away. I guarantee it. Jesus was either God or he was a lunatic and should have been locked away. People don't, I mean, I guess some people follow madmen, but it usually dies when the madman dies. You know what I'm saying? Jim Jones, Charles Manson, Martin Applegate, all of these characters that have come and gone once the leader is gone, everyone realizes what a crackpot they are, and they fall away too for the next crackpot. Right? What happened when, after Jesus died? The church grew, and in 300 years, it converted a pagan Roman empire into a Christian one. 300 years it took. Jesus is either exactly who he said he was, or he's a liar, a lunatic. It's as simple as that. And don't compare him to the other world religions. Don't go there with me, because none of them come even close. None of them. Like I said, you can go to their graves. They're still in the ground, honey. <laughs> they were mere men like you and me. Good ideas, probably noble intents. But they certainly weren't God. The God of creation. The God from all eternity who came in a little manger, born in a cave in an obscure village on the edge of the Roman Empire. Mm -hmm. And he and his followers have transformed the world. Why? Because he rose from the dead and is living now. Like that old hymn used to say, I serve a risen Savior. He's in the world today. I know that he is living, whatever men may say. I see his hand of mercy, I hear his voice of cheer, and just when I need him, he's always near. He lives, he lives, Christ Jesus lives today. He walks with me and talks with me along life's narrow way. He lives, he lives salvation to impart and you ask me how i know he lives because he lives within my heart yes. Yes. Amen. It's a beautiful old hymn we used to sing when i was a little boy in sunday school as you can see i still remember it it's a beautiful truth but it's more than just i feel him i have to 
slightly criticize the hymn in the sense that it's not just because I feel or I want or I wish this were all nice and true. It's an objective reality. It's outside whether you choose to believe in it or not. This really happened. Now what are you going to do about it? What are you going to do about it? Ignore it, brush it aside, pretend it didn't happen, ignore the claims of Jesus being God? Are you going to follow these other dead men, as noble as I said, as their intentions may be? Or are you going to hear it, if you will, from the horse's mouth, so to speak? You know what I'm saying? God came to earth. In his name, we called him Jesus. And he taught us how to live in his kingdom. And if you meditate on all of the 20 mysteries of the rosary, you'll get a good idea of what it's like to live in that kingdom. It's a good place to start. I don't know how. I don't know my mind. Start with the rosary. Start meditating on all of those mysteries of Jesus' life. That's how you live in God's kingdom, in God's will, and in God's way. You do that, you do well. Amen? Amen. Amen. So, again, my, 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 my joy, my goal for the new year, your new year's resolution, it is being more like Jesus for this new year. What a great Christmas present to give to Jesus next, this, this 2019. A more Christian you, a more Christ-like you, a more saint-like you. Don't have to be someone else. You can be you, filled with the love of God. Amen. Amen. And that's the Christmas present that Jesus really wants you to give him next year. I can, I can, I can, you can put that in the bank. I know that. Amen? Amen. Sound like a good resolution? Yes. Excellent. So with that, um, I, I want to just say I, I appreciate those of you who managed to look through your junk emails to find the one that I did send and have responded. Please check your junk email folders, wherever emails go that are like garbage or, or, or spam, because I sent a special email out that is a Google document that has um, a, a little survey in it. It's like two questions. It's not like hundreds and hundreds long. And it's basically just to give me a little feedback on how you like the new way I've been doing Bible study. Do you like the table talks? Do you like, do you like less of them, more of them? Go back to where they were. What is it that you would like to see next after we finish the Song of Songs? Would you like something from the New Testament, the Old Testament, a gospel? Maybe just a Bible survey. Just go through the whole thing from Genesis to Revelation again. That's always a good plan. And then just to give me a little feedback on what you like and what you think could be made better. Um, just looking for a little feedback. It's not a lot. Uh, and I will keep everything anonymous. Uh, but I do intend on sharing the results of the survey uh, once I get maybe next week when everyone can get it out of their spam folder and to be able to answer. Um, so just be aware uh, for that. So I just want to get a little feedback uh, on that. Uh, curiously enough, I can say in about the dozen people who did respond, the, the direction seems to be another Bible survey, which I really enjoyed doing last, last time. Mm -hmm. Just going from Genesis all the way through and seeing the big picture of God's plan from the beginning and start literally in Genesis and go all the way through Revelation. If I do uh, see that tends to be the direction where we're going. Um, I would hope to try and truncate it a little bit than I did. The last time I did that it took me a year. Um, but um, if I do do this this year, I've been thinking perhaps I would 
accent certain parts a little bit more, spend a little bit more time in depth, particularly in Genesis. The creation story, the fall, the flood, Abraham's call, that part is very critical to the rest of salvation history. Spend more time with David and his monarchy. Spend more time in some of the prophets. Maybe do a little survey of the prophets, which I didn't do last time. And also show where all the rest of the books of the Bible fit into this narrative. Like where does the Psalms fit in? Where does the Proverbs fit in? Why is it here? Because when you pick up your Bible, a lot of people say, well, I'm just gonna start from the beginning and read forward. I don't want to say that's a bad idea, but that's a bad idea. <laughs> Why? Well, because you start in Genesis, and okay, that's all right. Exodus, uh, it can get a little long-winded, but again, you get it. People hit Leviticus, and they stop. I'm done with this. I'm, 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 I'm gone. <laughs> page after page after page. Don't eat this. Don't eat that. Wear this. Don't do this. Don't do that. It's like, all right, all right. 635 laws God gave, page after page after page. And people just tune out. Leviticus is not the most exciting book in the Bible. It just isn't. Because it's not narrative, it's not a story, it's laws. It's just laws, laws, laws. Everything that you're supposed to do and don't do, okay? If you manage to muddle through Leviticus, then you get into Numbers. The story picks up again. Oh, okay. Then you get to Deuteronomy. And again, it just seems a little bit redundant, a little bit too much law, a lot, not a lot of narrative. And that's the wrong approach to the Bible. What you, what you want to do is get a book something like this, Walking with God. And as you know, during Christmas time, I gave several of these books away because this is an excellent Bible survey beginner's book. If you want to know how to get into the main idea, the Reader's Digest version of what the Bible is saying and going, what's its direction, what's its point, this is a very good book to start. It's very easy to 